about the lecture is about the path to a successful life. But there's no way that we can actually understand success with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until we actually redefine success. And remember in the earlier lecture, we were talking about how we're living in the age of postmodernism, where it's all about redefining the different definitions. And remember when we actually talked about in terms of redefining the definitions, that's really, guess what? That's also Islam. Even Islam is all about telling you to redefine the different matters around you, to understand things based on what they really are, and to be careful from zukhrif al qawli ghurura. To be careful from all the different cosmetics that might actually be put around the wordings, because the wordings can be very manipulating. The wordings themselves can actually be the main tool that shaitan plays on your mind. If we as human beings, we could easily fall for an optical illusion, we are more susceptible to falling in a mental delusion and an illusion than actually an optical one. And that's why when we actually speak about, when we actually speak about success, it's extremely important. Okay, here we go. Is it moving? No. It's extremely important to keep in mind that when we speak about success, that remember that the pressure of the postmodern philosophies and the cultures have actually affected many of our definitions. If we don't actually recognize all these different definitions, we will actually fall to the social media that has right now created a new social currency to redefine many of the different things that surround you. So defining what makes success, who is successful, who's a person worthy of listening to, what is a, per, uh, a matter that is worthy of dealing with. Now, Muslims are actually becoming consumers of that postmodern product like any other community. Now, what we don't recognize is that people and their understanding of the world themselves and the dynamics it plays within their life and the social relations, it actually affects them without them recognizing. There are a lot of different hardships to actually, that actually arise in speaking about this topic. And the most important thing is that in the age of postmodernism, remember in the earlier lecture, I was actually talking about postmodernism and talking about the different philosophies that are out there. But there's something really scary about that, which is, what was that? A little bit louder? That's okay. So there's something really scary about that, is that within our times, there's this piece of it that's basically redefining what is ideal. And at many times, what is ideal is really, and who is ideal, is really the person that is embracing all the different paradoxes and ethics. And this is extremely scary because it's all about if you embrace all the different paradox and all the different discrepancies within culture and you manage to show that you don't see it, you have mastered to be the ideal person. If you manage to live the fakeness, you become ideal. And that's why we're looking at, in Islam, to actually be ideal is to actually consider and see the realities based on what they really are, not based on the manipulation. That's the first side. Now, here's a, another thing, is that in the time of what defines ideal, the focus is always the ideal self. What is the ideal self? The person, and by the way, it's extremely strange that never in history did we actually have 
the numbers of people dealing with mental distress like the time that we're living in today. And never in history did we actually have the needs that actually are important to sustaining our life ever be in such abundance. It's supposed to be actually making life easier. Yet our coping skills are regressing instead of developing and advancing. Whatever happened, are we looking at the wrong angle? What is actually going on? Where is the problem? Right now, the abundance of fitna, kufr, deviation, pressuring the Muslim individuals to right now live based on a certain paradigm of what is ideal. And always the constant of searching for role models in the era when there's actually lack of role models. The role model is going to be a person that probably mastered probably something extremely stupid literally, probably mastered to do a certain move with their lips, their legs, or whatever have you, or a certain dance, and they become the ideal. What is actually going on? We're living in hopes versus reality. We're living a reality where you are actually asked to embrace all the paradox and even at the universities, you're actually asked to live the lie, embrace the lie, or you did not master how to be inclusive. A new narrative is actually passed on to you every single day without you recognizing. If you don't embrace the lie, you don't deserve to be the ideal person. Embrace it, or you will basically be painted with a brush that you fail. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, be careful. Throughout history, you had different nations that the Quran always talked about in order to tell you that the history is going to repeat itself and the same thing is going to happen. The Pharaoh at one point was actually manipulating the masses that he was actually bringing in the most ideal level of civilization. He was in bringing in prosperity. He was bringing in justice. And that's why he was telling the people about Prophet Musa. What was his fear? You're so careful. You're really keen. Yes, that's how Fir'aun was presenting himself. What was it? That he was afraid that the people or Musa and the followers of Musa were actually changing the main core of what the civilization of Egypt was actually growing through the ideal was to build this huge monarchy, this huge kingdom of who to work in the service for the Pharaoh was actually what was going to give you honor. Why? Because then you will be working for the honor in the service of the almighty Pharaoh. It was a manipulation. And literally, all those that were actually working within that civilization called it a civilization. And until now, it is actually called a civilization. But Islam tells you, correct your vision. Musa is the place of civilization. Correct your vision. La ilaha illallah is actually the place of success, is the
the place of civilization. Why? Why would that even be a place of civilization? Well, that's because when we speak of success, it's all about how do you get to the main reason for your purpose of life? Your purpose of life was actually to be tested. The tool for your test is going to be to apply the principles of the Lord Almighty. So the Lord Almighty would actually tell you that the real place of success is not the materialistic life that you might see. For surely, it was not the pyramids. It was not the Pharaoh. And surely, it was not all those different things that the society was presenting it, that it was actually what's making a person go through success. So what is success? Success basically starts with you recognizing your place of defining where does haq start from? Where does truth actually start from? Truth actually starts from la ilaha illallah. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِيَّا تَبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنِّ وَمَا تَهْوَ الْأَنفُسِ وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنْ رَبِّهُمُ الْهُدَى You've got three main categories for defining the world around you. People are either following speculation, they can present it as if it is the latest of what research and science have discovered. It can also be presented in lobbying, culture, and that's what the norm and the trend is. But the real basis to it was none other but pleasure. None other but a delusion that the rest of the society wanted you to embrace. That's the same delusion that even Qawm Lut were actually doing in where even when the angels coming into the form of human beings, they actually asked Prophet Lut, we need to have a conversation. And you know what that means? They were actually interested in them. But then what happened? He basically said, there are these girls within the society. Why are you coming after these guests? And they said, no. At the end of the day, what happens? They basically plot and plot, it was time to bring an end to whatever is causing a threat to our growing civilization. According to them, what was the problem with Lut? What was the mistake that he was committing? They said, just expel them out of the city. Why? What, what crime did they commit? What was the crime? They're actually seeking tahara. They're seeking purification. They're seeking a different type of a trend. And that trend is going to be a threat to the trend we're trying to propagate. We're trying to instill within the society. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the real person to succeed was actually Prophet Lut. Now we go, Prophet Musa, Prophet Lut, and the list goes on and on because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling us that the story of success actually starts with who do you consider as well, number one, your essence that preceded your existence? How do you actually work towards the destination that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the main reason for life? What are, you, what are you heading to? Therefore, it's all about redefining your places of orbit. Your place of orbit is going to determine the places that draw you in. And that's where, when you actually look at the destinations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually says, Qul amantu billahi thumma staqim. The first orbit, the first place of starting, redefining your vision, how you recognize 
what you're doing. You recognize where you're heading. You recognize where your definition of mind is. What is the definition of mind? The definition of mind is to help you define all the different matters that are around you. Because if you don't define the different matters around you, you will be sucked in. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, start with la ilaha illallah and say it. Make it a word that you believe in. Make it the word that you always utter. Speak it in every single pride. Qul amantu billahi thumma staqim. Say, I believe in the Lord Almighty. And then take the path to success. But you see right there, this little, this little, right, right there, line with all these different lines. The Prophet ﷺ actually explained that there's this one path, and all the different paths that are around it are basically paths to Shaytan, and there's only one path to Allah Almighty. So what does that mean? You can have so many different paths that are called the different isms. Feminism, secularism, and so many different paths that are out there. Nationalism, tribalism, all these different things. But there's only one path to the Lord Almighty. So the Prophet ﷺ was telling you, be careful from getting drawn and sucked into these isms because they are paths of Shaitan. So how do we actually understand all of this? The way we understand the world actually starts from in there your mind because if you don't actually have your definitions in place you're going to get lost in so many different definitions what do i start with to actually live the road to success i always put it in an acronym d m a i m this acronym was not invented by me this acronym is basically called Maqasad al-Sharia, the main reasons for Sharia, the main legal maxims of what Sharia, or in other words, the vertebra of Islam, in where D should be your first place of focus. What is D? D is basically your deen, your spirituality. That's the first thing that you want to start with. But your deen, it must be in order for it to grow. It must be constantly growing. Because an iman yazidu wa yanqus, yazidu bi ta'a wa yanqus bil ma'siyah, because your deen will increase and decrease. This fluctuation in increasing and decreasing, you have the responsibility to make it grow. You make it grow by obedience to the Lord Almighty. In other words, freedom from obeying anyone but Allah. Islam is about making you free from anybody manipulating you that they're actually saying what's right to actually saying, no, I'm not gonna be indoctrinated. I need to be the person to actually speak the word of truth, regardless of all those areas that are right now putting me in fear of saying, what is help? Stand up strong high. Don't be afraid. Let your deen be your number one priority. Number two, the preservation of your life. The preservation of your life because your life is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to make sure that you remember all the time that by preserving your life, and that by being thankful to your to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you're actually keeping that connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and using your body to be the means to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aql and mind. In where you're constantly, when we're speaking about mental health, like I said earlier, that's probably the most commonly and talked about subject right now. But when we're actually speaking about aql in Islam, it's basically telling you what are you feeding your mind, whether we're talking about substances or whether we're talking about what is even more dangerous than substance. It's the indoctrination. That's even more dangerous than the actual substance because with substance, you can probably go some with treatment facility probably in four months, and you'll probably be out of the facility in four months and be treated. 
Yes, there's going to be an addiction somewhere um, that will probably come back to you every, uh, every once in a while. But what's even more dangerous, because that's a sin. If somebody is addicted to alcohol, that's a sin. Not that I'm, I'm saying it's not, it's not dangerous. It's definitely a sin. But what's even more dangerous than sin is kufur, my friends. What's even more dangerous is the indoctrination in where it's taking you in the name of education into an indoctrination, getting you out of Islam and wanting you to believe in manipulation and to call it reality and to call it inclusivity and to call it that it's all about human rights and to call it, and the list goes on and on with a different political correctness that manages to deceive us, the protection of, in order to actually get to the fourth level, success, family, and chastity. Because when you're actually concerned about chastity, then you're actually getting into the path of making sure you're getting that balance with preserving your own family. Because once you preserve your family, then you actually preserve your own physical health, mental health, psychological, and more importantly, your deen. Five, wealth. When you actually look at today, what we're actually told in terms of success, I want you to look at the paradox here. The West actually used this the opposite way. So in Islam, deen comes first, nafs comes second, aql ird man. The West actually flips it. Man comes first, wealth comes first, chastity and sex come second, education comes third, life comes fourth. If you have time for Dean, all right, do some yoga. You see where the problem is? The problem is when we are actually indoctrinated to the wrong definition of where success lies. And that's why when we look at where does success lie, it actually starts with recognizing your pillars of Islam, recognizing how to actually put in tahara, salah, how to put in your definitions in order. Because if those definitions are not in order, you're actually confusing your priorities. And what actually leads to failure is number one reason is when you confuse your priorities. Because the second you confuse your priorities, you'll actually be lost in paths. You, you've got a short time, you've got limited energy, and you definitely cannot multitask. And even when you do, you will actually not be successful in both. You need to focus. So your focus, number one, actually starts with your deen. Two, with your health. Number three, pure and halal thought. Focus on learning your deen because you will not be capable of growing in your deen if you don't actually know where your deen is. It's not enough to actually go to Duxi part-time or go to Duxi here and there. That's not enough. Every single day, you actually need to work on your dhikr, your visual dhikr, your audio dhikr, your oral dhikr. It's not enough because there is also what processes the dynamics within your brain, the hilm. Ilm, even fiqh, even hadith, all of that is going to help you correct your mind, your vision, in order to make sure that you're actually living based on la ilaha illallah, because you could easily get sucked in. It's extremely easy. In order to not get sucked in, what should I work on? Make sure that you actually put these places and get into considering those different areas to preserving your deen. Because remember, your purpose of creation was your life. When you're on your deathbed, what's the first thing that's gonna be 
on your mind? Your dhikr, what are you constantly repeating? What are you constantly listening to? Because remember, when you actually look at your face, when we read, Aslam tu wajhiya lillah, why the face? Because the back is just a, play, a blank piece. Just a blank piece. But for al wajr, what are you looking to? What are you looking at? What are you listening to? What are you talking about? What are you consuming? What are you, how much of time are you spending with your friends? If it is not la ilaha illallah, if you're not engaging in dhikr, don't waste your life. Your time is limited. Now you have the potentials. If we were to take right now just a rough numbering, most of you are between the ages of 15 and 25. That's most time of your potentials. That's the time when you have the most free time, the most potential. That's the time you want to use because once you grow older, you're going to have children, you're gonna get busy with your kids and you're going to get busy with so many different things. This is your golden era. If you don't use your golden era for a golden mission, you've lost it all. Are you really heading towards success? Or are you heading towards a delusion? What are we supposed to be considering here? At the end of the day, Islam tells you, listen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam or in an image of a human being. And that was to teach a lesson, by the way. The Sahaba are there sitting down and then Jibreel comes in. The Sahaba are sitting down and they said, while we were sitting with the Prophet a man comes in dressed in white. We didn't know who that person was. Definitely. He was not a person that was on a journey. We didn't recognize who that person was, but we had seen one thing. He was dressed in white clothing and we had seen he was coming in, sitting right in front of the Prophet and said, Akhbirni an Islam. Put his legs, knees, right in front of the Prophet's knees. Tell me about Islam. That was the most important lesson to learn. The lesson to learn is not on a rhetorical narrative to lay out. Akhbirni an al-Islam. Ya Allah, you sent Jibreel, the mightiest angel, to come and teach us all one lesson. Akhbirni an al-Islam. Tell me about Islam. How dangerous? Why is that so important? Why not tell us about how atoms work and the cure to cancer and, and all these different things? Because all of those are modernities that will perish, my dear. What's more important is that moment that you actually face your Lord Almighty. What are you going to say? What are you going to answer? Why were you created from the very beginning? So he said, Akhbirni an al Islam. And he gives him an Islam. And tashhada an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Wa tuqeem al salah wa tu'ti zakah. We know the answer. It's not about knowing the answer. It's about letting that answer shape your vision to success and letting that be your main orbit. Just like you would study in chemistry, you've got every single chemical element actually have an orbit. And that orbit is what shapes its identity whether it's gas, liquid, solid, and all those different things in chemistry that we know of and so, that we read about, because that's what makes its identity. But what you wanna keep in mind 
is that you as a Muslim, you also have the same orbit. Your orbit should be Allah Almighty, your deen. Your nafs goes in the second orbit. Your, your aql goes in the third orbit. That's what leads you to success because once you have this orbit in place, you will have your identity in shape. Therefore, when you correct your place of vision, that's what helps you recognize your priorities. And that's where, when we're speaking about successful life and success, we first have to start with figuring out all the different delusions that are passed on to us of what it means to be successful, that it's about getting a degree, that it's about getting a job, that it's about buying a home, that it's about finding the love of your life and, and so forth. But Islam tells you, wait a minute, figure out your deen. And remember that the purpose of life actually started before even your existence. So make sure your effort, your vision, and all the different priorities you lay out first, la ilaha illallah. Make sure you put that always within the paradigm of understanding where you're getting, because the main thing you're getting to is actually Jannah. That's what you want to get to. You want to get to Jannah. So therefore, consider what is the purpose of my life? Well, how do I actually learn and see the world around me based on the lens of deen of la ilaha illallah? Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you Jibreel alayhi salam all the way down to earth in order to tell you that listen, because the main reason, when you're actually on judgment day and everything blacks out, the main focus is, Allahumma nafsi, nafsi, Ya Allah, get me saved. Because at that moment, you just want to be away from hellfire because you just want to be zuhziha. Because you just want to be taken out. Let all the people that are right now focusing on their life and money and sex and all the different things of pleasures, let them focus on what they focus because that is what's going to perish. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell, tells you all that is a delusion. Be careful from getting sucked in in where your focus is going to be about your outer appearance. Did I get a piercing? How do I my, my eyebrows look? Do I need a, a microblading? Maybe I need to fix my nose. Maybe I need to, what is that called? The lips and puffing up the lips and the, and the butt and whatever it is. And the list goes on and on and it's gonna be endless. Endless. You're never going to be satisfied because shaitan is gonna make you not never ever satisfied. You're going to try, try puffing up every single corner in your body, and it's never going to be enough. Downsizing some and growing some, and at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, listen, all of that will perish. Work on what will not perish. وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ يَرْفَعُ Work on what the Lord Almighty tells you, your actions. So how do I actually start? They were guided for the best of the words. And that guided them to actually getting guided to the best of the actions. So what happens at the end of the day? What are you talking about? What are you, what environment are you putting yourself in? Is that investing in your deen or is that investing in what will perish in your body? What are you focusing on? What are you following on Instagram? 
What are you following on social media? And the list goes on and on. Are you just trying to yourself? And guess what? The feeling of lacking satisfaction kills you first. It burns you first. Why? Because you will never feel that you're satisfied. So you will always feel deprived. And when you feel deprived, it makes you live in a cage of burning fire that you can never get to the level of that beauty, the level of that fame, the level of all of, all of that money and all of that satisfaction. What do you want to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you the true success is not in those materialistic things, that the true success is actually in there. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala inna awliya Allah, la khawfun alayhim, wa la hum yahzanun. Verily, those that are, the word is awliya. Well, the word awliya actually means three things. Il wali is basically in three categories. Il mahabba, il nusra, il istihana. In love, victory, in seeking support from. So those that are actually living in ultimate love to the Lord Almighty, and they know that the Lord Almighty is the one that controls everything that surrounds them. So they only seek support from the Lord Almighty because they know that the Lord Almighty is the one that is the master of this whole universe. So what do they do? They basically turn to the Lord Almighty in their success. So the Lord Almighty gives them that. And he says, They don't feel fear nor sorrow. In other words, depression is going to decrease. This is not at all to say that Every single person that has depression is lacking iman. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because even Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبْيَضَّتْ عَيْنَهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ فَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ His eyes turned white from all the sorrow and the sadness over his son. He was a prophet. And still went into this deep sorrow that affected him and affected him physically. But there was one side of a natural reason in where certainly for losing his son, he basically got into that. But the Lord Almighty would actually tell us that those that are submitting to the Lord Almighty, those that have the ultimate love, they seek the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they seek support from the Lord Almighty, those are the ones. They don't fear. They don't fear. Why don't they fear? Well, they don't fear because they know that the Lord Almighty will embrace them in justice, in mercy. So what do they live in? They live in embracing Allah Almighty because they recognize whenever I need the Lord Almighty, I don't need to turn in human beings because they are no less weaker than me. They turn to the Lord Almighty for victory, for support. So who are the people that are awliya Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. Those are the people that believe in the Lord Almighty. And those are the people that take it as a commitment. They're committed to their faith. What actually makes a commitment in faith? Determination, consistency equals commitment. In order to be successful, you need to have this rule, consistency. Determination. And that's how you get to commitment. That's why those people, So how do I actually fix those areas? Remember, work on correcting your vision making that commitment in your heart. And that's how you will get into your soul, your ihsan, your inner soul, actually getting into that commitment only 
when you get this corrected towards the Lord Almighty. Practice on putting your deen in place. And then, of course, when you're looking at in terms of chastity, remember, modesty and faith are companions. If one of them is removed, the other is removed. Hijab is not a piece of cloth, my, my dear. Hijab itself is actually that modesty. It's basically to help you live and feel that I'm part of the mu'minat. It's basically to let you before others actually know that she's a person that embraces la ilaha illallah. So to her, she basically considers that her chastity is to guard her iman, that she considers only what is halal and here's what halal and touches only halal. Therefore, the salihin would say, Whenever I would cross the boundaries, I would see the effect of my sin on my pets, on my, my spouses and my children and everyone that's around me. So how do I actually consider all of those areas? Be careful from actually getting absorbed in what right now the main societies work towards what is the main society working towards? It's all about money. So Islam tells you, be careful. Your true success is not in money, but is actually in understanding that it's all about truth and reality. And be careful from the delusion that surrounds you. And be careful and focus on your mind heart and soul, and be careful from how many will actually redefine humanhood for you. So be careful from focusing on the outer appearance because showing off your body and appearance and trying to change the realities of the different things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you in is nothing but a delusion. Be careful from actually living that delusion. So be keen on your akhlaq. Be keen on your spirituality. Be keen on living the reality and not the narrative. So Islam tells you, hold on to the Prophet's mission because remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you that at the end, there are certain men. And of course, this is a generalized statement. It's talking about jihad, but it would include women as well. What were they honest about? They were honest to actually live the mission of the prophets and the messengers. They were honest to actually not let, they were rijal, la tulihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah. They were men. They were people of mighty mission. They were people of a legacy, not wealth. And not any entertainment would get them off dhikr. They were committed, consistent, and that actually built in them the commitment because they understood that success is a responsibility that grants you honor. And at the end of the day, is that whether it's a woman or whether it's a man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually tells us, ladies, don't let your focus be on how the shaitan or the people that surround shaitan will tell you that it's all about looking attractive. So he says, tells the Prophet Sallallahu wives, why? Because it's basically, you are the crux of the matter. It's basically a lesson to learn throughout history that ladies, if you really are at the level of fearing Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, don't be lenient with your voices because even your voice should only be a word of haq. So he said, be careful from working and focusing on getting the attraction of men or getting the attraction of those that have diseases in their hearts. And قُلْنَ قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا And make sure you say what is haq and make sure you say what is right. And at the end of the day, when يَسَعَكَ بَيْتُكْ careful from going and wandering everywhere. Let your own home be spacious for you. 
not spacious in its space and, and how many square feet, but let it be the place where you would actually be capable of living in order to, to consider your deen, to consider your akhirah. Be careful from wandering around in malls and shopping and all of that. Because there's no way if you're constantly just shopping and if you're constantly just working on social media, your eyes are basically focused elsewhere in order for you to actually feel that faith. Let you look inside. Work on that area. Remember the words. Recite. Do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was actually mentioned in your homes. Yes, this is talking about the, the wives of the Prophet but this is also something that we should live. Remember the dhikr. Remember that your true success actually starts from defining and knowing that the essence that preceded your existence is basically testing you, where are you heading? Be careful from being drawn in dunya. And remember to always consider la ilaha illallah because you are a woman of a mission. Jazakumullah khairan wa barakallahu fikum. And may Allah make you all be inshallah ya rabbi um, women of mission, women that go higher than all the materialistic things that surround us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all. Make that dua always. Allahumma ja'al fi basari noora, wa fi qalbi noora, wa fi sam'i noora. Ya Allah, make light in my sight, enlighten my hearing, enlighten my heart, and light above me, and make me speak in light. Allahumma amin and make me those that will spread light. Allahumma amin. Wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Is this a quick question and answer or have we finished? What? Oh, okay. All right, salamu alaikum everyone.